So as the uh, title suggests, Challenges and Opportunities, uh, British Muslim Women and Maktab Education. So Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. As you can see, we have uh, key, key terms such as Maktab Education and uh, British Muslims. So I'd like to start with, with those two first. Many discussions about the role and status of Muslim women in society reveal at least three common perceptions. They are either suppressed, if you believe uh, the media, or uneducated, and also housebound. Seldom are they presented as opinionated or educated and active, let alone being a force for change for their own communities and for the uh, wider society in general. Often you hear them as being stereotyped as being passive and politically apathetic and voiceless. On the other hand, the subject of young Muslims learning in Maktab and their personal engagement in this process are of interest not only to Muslim educators, but also to families, politicians, welfare groups, and young people themselves. Interestingly, schools are taking a proactive and a positive approach to working and understanding the provisions that are being made by Maktab uh, providers, and they are working towards further collaboration. Equally, many Muslims are welcoming external support to enhance the quality of provisions that these children are being offered in the maktab sector. Some local authorities, for instance, are providing capacity developing programs to strengthen the work of faith communities. In turn, parents have welcomed changes appearing in some maktab but also the intensity of the debate regarding the role of madrasas and to some extent the makatib has increased considerably in the past years. However, in most of these commentaries about Muslim educational institutions, the voice of the female remains scarce. Therefore, this evening, uh, I wish to address this significant gap. The paper will present the perspectives of Muslim female teachers in relation to the religious instruction and the nurture of Muslim children in England. It will expose the significance that they attach to maktab education and the contribution that they think it makes to British society in general and to young people in particular. It will also reveal their responses to allegations against maktabs being labeled as dens of terror. Finally, the paper will show and try to highlight the changing landscape that is taking place. So let me begin by uh, explaining some essential background information about the topic under discussion before I present to you the findings. The word maktab, the plural of which is makatib, is an Arabic word meaning a place of writing or a place of study. Often in the UK, madrasa, a place of studying, and its plural, madaris, is used. So madrasa is also applied for maktab. Hence, due to this interchangeable application, it is important to distinguish between a maktab from a madrasa when it is applied to a darul ulum, a higher institute of learning. Moreover, it is important also to acknowledge and to note that there are different words used in different Muslim communities in relation to maktab education. Some might refer to it as masit, others might refer to it as pondok, and so forth. However, uh, most children in the UK may refer to the maktab as mosque school or mosque. And the, the reference is to the supplementary school that they attend in the evening. So in Britain, there has been a historical tradition of supplementary or complementary schools which are established for many reasons. Some are established for educating children about their cultural heritage or cultural origins, languages, and history. Chris and her colleagues researching the Gujarati community complementary schools found that they also serve social aims such as peaceful coexistence. These instrumental benefits also resonate in Chinese complementary schools. Moreover, Francis and her team found such institutes as being key sites where the ongoing construction of diasporic identities are constructed, contested, I would say constructed as well. For the Muslim community, it would be fair to assert that a prominent feature of providing maktab education is to support the continuity of religious knowledge and practice which is central to Muslim community. In other words, according to Boyle, they assist Muslim children and the Muslim community to, mod to mediate between forces of tradition and modernity. 
in the more organized settings, in the more organized settings in advanced places, children are taught a more comprehensive curriculum, which includes, in addition to reciting the Quran, the biography of the Prophet wasallam, jurisprudence, Islamic history, social and moral values, and often community languages. Those who wish to memorize the Holy Quran and become a Hafiz or a Hafizah attend classes either in the morning or additional classes whenever appropriate. These are held in diverse places, as we've heard uh, that some of them are held, majority are in mosques, some in community centers, some in former church halls. Sometimes school halls are hired after school hours. Many children attend private homes as well. And, and, and that is a significant uh, aspect of uh, the, the maktab system. As far as could be certain, there is only one purpose-built madrasa somewhere uh, in this country. Like all schools, like all schools, maktabs have attracted some criticisms. An awareness of these criticisms is useful to appreciate insider perspectives, which I will be presenting you shortly. A decade ago, Halstead reported the inadequacy of premises resources and the quality of teaching in some areas. In the classroom, Gent found one of his participants reporting mischievous activities and fear of the male authority and the use of what he called mechanical teaching methods. However, studies show positive features of supplementary schools on children's learning and development as well. However, Siddiqui uh, in, in 2006 raised concern about the risk of child abuse. And some years ago, media reports highlighted safeguarding issues in madrasas and maktabs. This led to arguments about regulations not fully protecting children in supplementary schools. In view of these concerns related to the quality of provisions, many attempts have been made in recent years to support madrasas and maktabs. For instance, local authorities have encouraged links with mainstream schools. A proactive approach to child protection, health and safety, behavior management, and pedagogy are taking place. Others have been working closely with leaders of maktabs to explore mutually enriching encounters with local authority schools and also with uh, madrasa and mosque supplementary schools. Amongst all these collaborations, reforms, and research studies, the perspective of the personnel at the heart of these maktabs is yet to be fully explored to gain an understanding of the multifaceted efforts and viewpoints. So let me introduce the research undertaken. So the research uh, was conducted with a group of 52 females attending training sessions on maktab education. These were delivered by the speaker in various locations in England, uh, and they were surveyed. A questionnaire was designed to assist in eliciting the following. One, the aims and significance and contribution of maktab uh, education. Two, the motives of teaching, the challenges and opportunities in the maktabs that they're taught. Three, the responses and reactions to allegations against makatib. And finally, the proposals to enhance the image of maktab education and the maktab sector as a whole. Now, I'm aware that although these participants were all Muslimah, uh, they are a heterogeneous group uh, from different linguistic, ethnic, socioeconomic, and educational backgrounds. Let us explore now the results. So 41 questionnaires were received. 40 were British citizens. 26 declared that they had been born in Britain, four in Pakistan, six in India, one in the reunion, and four had not declared uh, that information. Of these, 35 were alimas, and these are uh, students, th these are people who had graduated from Darul Ulums or higher institutes of Islamic learning or theological uh, colleges and, and universities. One was a Hafiza, someone who has memorized the entire Quran. 28 declared that they had been married with children. 11 were single, 12 had not declared this information, 29 indicated to be mothers with either one, two, or three children. And then the tables will show us uh, the age of the participants. So you can see that uh, 36 were under 35. 
So again, that's reflecting the uh, age population generally described of Muslims in the UK. The next table shows us the experience that they have had. And it's interesting to see that uh, uh, the ones that I have highlighted, uh, that there were at least 11 who had more than 10 or, 10 or more than 10 years of experience teaching in the maktab sector. Now, taking this profile into consideration, uh, it was fascinating to explore what they considered to be the aims of maktab education. Okay. Why is it? Uh, what were they trying to uh, achieve through this? Some reiterated, some reiterated the expected aims, such as knowing the principles of Islam and helping children to understand their roles and responsibilities and to fulfill them as best as they can. In addition to this all-encompassing aims, some felt that specifically wanted the children to gain a deeper understanding of their religion and to know how to read the Quran and to maintain the love of the Prophet ﷺ and make him a role model. Now, such a theologically oriented endeavor was evident from most responses. And it was clear that in this sense, they held high expectations for their pupils and sometimes almost appeared to be idealistic. However, a maktab offers more than the recitation of the Quran and religious instruction. Muslim children learn within the ethical and moral framework of Islam to differentiate between right and wrong and to realize the effects of these in their lives. Children also develop the self-esteem and relationship with Islam. Unsurprisingly, therefore, on a personal level, these teachers felt the aims were also to ensure that their learners became more confident and proud to be Muslims, love Islam, know the history, and know how to live peaceful lives and to respect parents and other people. Now, it, uh, unfortunately, uh, the insights into how that actually happened uh, did, not, did not feature. But interestingly, in a plural society where people of different faiths and none coexist, some of these teachers hope that their learners will be positioned to have a dialogue with non-Muslims. Again, how that is implemented in the classroom did not feature in the responses. As one would expect, the aims of maktab education were not confined to this temporal world. These participants encourage their children to think about the hereafter. Thus, a maktab provides opportunities to think about big questions, such as, what is the purpose of life? They also help them to begin preparing for the hereafter. They support children in knowing how to gain the pleasure of Allah in this world and to learn about heaven and hell. So that, that section summarizes how they conceive the aims of maktab education to be. In the next part, I want to share with you the significance that they attach of a maktab in producing uh, or in creating Muslim personalities. As stated earlier, 26 participants were born in Britain. Okay, 26. We have noted so far that in terms of the overall aims, they were, they were as one would expect. However, since the majority were British born, I was interested to find out the significance, if any, that they attach to maktab education in contemporary education and political discourses. The data showed that 85% indicated that maktab in Britain were very important for the children. And they justified this importance on philosophical and pragmatic uh, basis. Many explanations were given, and these have been categorized into three themes. So I will share with you these three themes. The first one is this idea of uh, faithful children. Many respondents stated that maktab education is important because it allows them to teach Muslim belief, Muslim practice, and attitudes and values. On the other hand, in the absence of such a provision, some of the teachers were anxious that Muslim children may go off the deen, i.e. off the religion and off the way of life, and may go astray and, and take the wrong path. In, those, in, in so doing, their views conquer with those found by other researchers who state that maktab education are significant as they assist Muslim children to remain within the fold of their religion. However, there is more to this protective vision of maktab education. There are places where future generations of Muslim children can develop a global affinity with their fellow Muslims. Thus, it is believed by these teachers that a maktab is significant as it contributes in making Muslims stronger as an ummah. 
Nevertheless, not all parents have got access to the knowledge and requirements uh, to provide maktab education. So for many, the maktab continues to be uh, acting as a local parentis for those who are unable to provide uh, the provisions that uh, they want to from home or from elsewhere. Let's move on to the second theme, which was holistic education. Nationally, however, some Muslims have concerns with the education provided in mainstream schools. It is described as inadequate by researchers such as Halstead and consisting of an inflexible curriculum by others. Indeed, some parents lack trust in the system itself. One of the reasons for this is that there seems to be a clash between the social and value systems that are in existence. For instance, a participant observed that in school, children are taught to stand up to everything, including their parents, and do whatever they want to do. But also, worldly education is given priority and is given preference. In other words, it seems to me that these teachers believe that a maktab offers enrichment to the national curriculum. And she hints at the different expectations of the home and those delivered in schools through the hidden curriculum. Moreover, there is an apparent criticism of mainstream school culture, which encourages indifference to family commitments. Another participant posited that maktabs were equal in importance to schools. Okay. Here again, there appears to be a shift in three respects. The first one is that education for Muslim children should be unified without the dichotomy of the secular and the religious. In other words, the blurring of the deen and the dunya educational distinction is to be noted here. The second observation is that there is a call to reduce the inferiority complex surrounding maktab education. In other words, the value and the worth of maktabs is being amplified. Finally, they project maktab education as teaching a way of life rather than being a Quran school only. Thus, the influence on contemporary thinking is becoming evident amongst these teachers. The third theme is what can be called a means of resistance. A resistance identity has been a resistance identity that rejects dominant Western culture and identity has been located by Castles. Castles has argued that devalued communities react against the denial of the particular cultural ideologies, identity, and customs. Some Muslims may attempt to re resist the secular and modern image which is ex in which they are operating and in which they, uh, they live. A resistant identity could lead them to reject the culture of those who reject or marginalize them as others. So in a society where communal values are supposedly declining, coupled with the impression that non-Muslim influences are increasing daily, in this context, a maktab becomes significant since it is understood to be a place where Muslim children can gain the confidence to resist various pressures existing in society, according to some of these teachers. Children, it is argued, are surrounded by modern influences. This might include the threat of westernization and un-Islamic values as reported by Halstead. But also, we can add to that list secularism, materialism, nihilism, and also antisocial behavior. For these reasons, teachers in this, in this study suggest that Muslim children need to go to a place like a madrasa where they can be enlightened for, and strengthen their faith, their iman, and respond to the propaganda of the media. Indeed, many agreed that whilst attending maktab, children are safer away from roaming the streets and from causing problems to other people and to themselves. So this is to do with uh, the key questions that have, that have been asked so far. The next section will take you through the contributions that a maktab uh, is going to make according to their views. Their responses have shown that the maktab education contributes at three levels. One is at the level of the child. The second one is at the level of the community. And the third one is uh, at the social level, national level. And uh, it seems that these are interconnected and related. So maybe uh, the, the level of the child feeds into the community and that the community feeds into, uh, into the country. 
Thus, it seems that they play a wider role than is generally perceived. Thus, uh, not only are children taught to act according to the sunnah, that is the model of the Prophet wasallam, in terms of fulfilling the rights of others, as well as being good and behaving well at all times, they claim that a maktab brings the community together. It helps children understand where they come from, how to live peacefully, and how to identify themselves as part of the global Muslim community. Further contributions, they state, are that by teaching children adab, this is the ethics and the morals and the values, and by promoting virtues such as love, care, and kindness, they facilitate in students becoming better people. In other words, ideally, it seems makatib are concerned with making lifetime changes. In addition, by instilling Islamic values in children, they are helping towards the betterment of the community and the country. Thus, based on this evidence, one could argue that the main contribution is to make them good Islamic citizens or good Muslims. Now, we need to consider how uh, that has been conceptualized and how that is taking place. It was useful to find out what these participants had in mind when they were asked, how does a maktab make Muslims better citizens, or I would say, better Muslims? It was not surprising that the responses from these alimas, these are scholars, uh, varied in terms of their breadth and detail. Overall, apparently, their construction of being a good Muslim or good Muslim citizen revolves around five ideals. These are talim and tarbiyah, following the sunnah, role modeling, personal development, and rejecting antisocial behavior. And I will elaborate on each one of these now. At least 22, at least 22 participants specifically corroborated with the role of maktab as being one which provides talim and tarbiyah. Talim, you can explain that as being education. And tarbiyah, nurture or giving adab in, in a fuller sense. Okay. Uh, this is a reflection of the purpose of education in Islam, in which the aim is to produce a good human, not only a good citizen. This would include the traditional ideas of developing, developing good manners, good characters, respecting elders and neighbors, and so forth. However, it was reassuring to discover an emphasis on concepts prominent in, pro in contemporary discourse. Thus, according to, some, according to some, the maktab teaches about equality and modesty and respect diversity of other religions as well. This language seems to suggest an articulation and an internalization of contemporary ideas and requirements and demands by society uh, and others. But also, when you look at the language that is being used, such as uh, love and being kind and being good citizens uh, and being helpful and so forth, these are values that are part of the citizenship and religious education curriculum uh, in schools. These values are important for the development of the sense of justice and moral responsibility. In other words, most of these teachers feel maktab ma maktab's influence in making young Muslims better people and also better citizens by teaching universal values from a very young age. These actions, according to them, reflect the model of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Thus, Muslim children, they would say, become better prepared for the wider society. The second ideal looks at, and the third one looks at, following the sunnah and role models. Following the sublime model of the Prophet ﷺ was conceptualized in two ways. The sunnah was seen as a guide for development of better citizens and thus better Muslims. A couple of teachers referred to themselves as links between the children and the Prophet ﷺ himself because a maktab brings the life, the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ into the children and the mediating factor is the teachers themselves. According to one alima, by making the Prophet a model وسلم, for the children, the child becomes a better person and hence a better citizen. However, instead of the concept of sunnah remaining a theoretical construction in their everyday duties of teaching, these teachers give it a practical dimension. They achieve this through many different ways. First of all, through the curriculum that they deliver. At the same time, they use motivating factors for them to be able to uh, uh, apply and implement and act upon the sunnah of the Prophet 
Others, and this is very interesting, others encourage them to implement their knowledge in their daily lives. Where is this? In schools, how? By not answering back to teachers, not bullying, being polite, and treating everyone with respect. Such an approach makes learning more relevant and meaningful and challenges the general notion of Makati being disconnected with the real world and irrelevancy. The fourth, the fourth dimension deals with personal development. Another area where a shift has been identified is in the relationship between personal development and citizenship. According to most of them, Makati fulfill a crucial function in a child's life by removing ignorance from a young age. One female reason if a child is taught positive things, respect and tolerance in a maktab for an earlier age, then they will be confident British Muslims. Another respondent stated that the personal development was achieved by, and this is very encouraged, by helping them to learn about different cultures and by molding their character in the way that Islam requires. Okay. Now, the fifth ideal is to reject antisocial behavior. This teachers, appear, this teachers appear to be aware of the moral decline evident in some sections of British society and the reported increase in antisocial behavior. Some of them are convinced, based on a moral and social confirmism commonly found in maktab education, maktab settings, that children should receive a clear framework of duty and responsibility from a young age. Thus, to them, maktab contributes a lot because the environment in which young Muslims are is negative for Muslims. Along these lines, some, emphasis, some responses, respondents asserted that in the maktab they learned to be a positive Muslim with the teachings of the Quran and the Hadith, and the children learn good Islamic education like being an insan, like being a human, and brotherhood and sisterhood and so forth. You may wonder, how is this being achieved? How is this being achieved? At least three respondents have begun to reconceptualize the maktab as a youth center in the English context, and this uh, has increased since uh, the study was uh, completed. So let us now consider their responses to the ac accusations that were leveled against uh, madrasas and maktabs. So in recent years, Muslim educational institutions have come under immense pressure of various kinds. Some have gone as far as labeling them as dens of terror. You can refer to Sikhan, Fay, Wajid, and, and, and Ali. In this context, it was pertinent to explore the continued enthusiasm of these teachers to teach in institutions accused of promoting extremism and terror, and now radicalization. Unsurprisingly, this provoked emotional responses which fell into two categories. The majority felt negative towards these ill-informed views, stereotypes, and prejudices. At least eight felt very bad about the connections between terrorism and Makatib. Some were very deeply offended, and others felt ashamed that a madrasa could be called such things. A few were disturbed and ashamed that a madrasa could be, say, could be called these things. A few were disturbed and upset with such misconceptions and misunderstandings. Consequently, teachers felt scared to teach in madrasa. As a classroom practitioner, it can be said with a degree of certainty that such an emotional state is not very conducive to productive relationships required for teaching in a classroom. These are the very people that society relies on nurturing, guiding, reforming, and places a huge responsibility on their shoulders. Yet the conditions for them to do this successfully are being made difficult or restricted. However, reading Reading deeper into their responses, a sense of anger among them becomes apparent. One can appreciate this anger at a personal level. However, the following quote is rather worrying. I feel angry at this nation and believe that this stereotypical view is very narrow-minded. I believe the wider society needs to be made aware of what we really do in Maktab to wipe this out. This is indicative of the suspicious feeling that some Muslims have of Britain and the feelings of not being respected by the West based on ignorance and lack of knowledge. And that is being a, the fact that it is being attributed at this national level 
is important and needs further thinking. On the other hand, it is most encouraging that they are open to the public to address their concerns. They have practical solutions to begin addressing such misunderstandings. Such views also explain to an extent why some of them deny the accusations being made against them. So how can this, be, this gap be bridged or how can uh, this be eliminated or reduced? To move matters forward, one of the alimas suggested that we need to work together to remove this perception. That was a quote. The majority, however, were apparently not intimidated by such accusations and claimed not to be affected at all. They were not deterred because they feel they are protecting children. In fact, their determination to continue serving is not only for Muslim children, but they see their services to be essential contribution to society as a whole. So in their vision, they are not, by being in maktab and helping children, they are not looking after the interests of the Muslim community or the Muslim children. They have in view the interests of society as a whole. So here we have two quotations. I love teaching at the madrasa. The wrong portrayal by the media and so forth just causes me to be more firm in my belief that what we do is right thing. That is why we face so much opposition. Again, the choice of opposition is, is key there. I get a sense of achievement, and I'm aware that people have their own narrow-minded discriminatory behavior. Where I can, I let them know of what I teach. Otherwise, I leave it to them. Contrary to the above worrying situations, there are many positive responses. Most continue to feel safe working in a madrasa and are fully aware, are fully aware of the issues that they are facing. They give the impression of engaging with the wider non-Muslim community. When they are questioned by non-Muslims about what happens in a the maktab, they try to give them a better understanding of what they teach. One teacher confirmed this, saying the following. I do not feel influenced at all by the media and what they say about the madrasas. As long as we teach our students the rights and wrongs and to differentiate, then only will they grow up to be civilized Muslim individuals. Most revealing here is the fact that there is a sense of confidence in revealing and making the maktab more accessible. Perhaps based on this confidence, one respondent suggested a solution which could potentially be an effective means not only to reduce the mistrust, but also for developing better relationships, especially with the wider community. According to a teacher, this good relationship can be achieved by giving them knowledge about what we teach and by inviting them to open days and so forth. So what, has, what should we expect? What is to come? I think there's a new vision and a new perspective already in place or beginning to appear in some places, or in some places needs to start happening. So it is a challenge to shed the image of a typical maktab, frequently portrayed by the media and other writers of the old school, both Muslims and non-Muslims and others, as being outdated and medieval. In view of this, it was significant to observe and to explore what these female teachers, bearing in mind that they were graduates of a theological school, a madrasa, a darul ulum, uh, they had some insightful uh, ideas to diverge. Overall, I have categorized this into internal changes and external changes. So for the wider community, for the wider community, there is a willingness to organize open days for non-Muslims. This perhaps may address the issue of ignorance which breeds contempt and eradicates prejudices. Another response revealed the detail of such a day. How would this look like uh, to address this unhealthy situation? This is what they have to say. Let non-Muslims, she said, come to our madrasa, give them a tour, and let them talk to our pupils and teachers. In addition to opening the doors to the wider public, publicizing the role of a madrasa and informing people about, about their activities was also suggested. Significantly, there are many internal changes taking place. As a solution, there is collaboration and partnership work with other maktabs in the local area. These have resulted in better classroom, classrooms and organizations and a consistent curriculum in some areas. Should this be successful, the benefits are obvious. Internally, and this is personally very encouraging for me, regular staff meetings are appearing to improve communication between teachers and to reach agreements on educational issues. This is also making internal matters get managed more efficiently. 
Therefore, organizationally, there are many changes to improve the image of the maktab within the Muslim community. Some have stronger collaborations with their parents in dealing with behavior management, educational attainment, and raising funds to refurbish the madrasas. There is an acknowledgement and a recognition to improve pedagogy, the teaching, that, the teaching methods that are taking place. Some of them recognize the different ways of teaching and learning and would like to be trained. In addition, they argue that this would further motivate children. They have also considered creating lesson plans and interesting lessons by adopting modern teaching methods and observing others uh, teaching within their sector. They have also thought about uh, making madrasas more safer and secure buildings with less noise and separate classrooms as necessary. They also want, and this is key, they also want to see an increase in the enjoyment of their students and for them to be more happier whilst they're at madrasa. Some desire their colleagues to be more approachable and to show more love and determination to the students. Moreover, others are offering extracurricular activities, youth clubs and trips. This further encourage and motivate children to attend maktab. Furthermore, some are utilizing computers and projectors. However, some want appropriate teachers in the appropriate classes. Others, on the other hand, have welcome or would welcome more apas and molanas. This is more graduates from the theological colleges who can understand the need of their children and who can discuss contemporary issues with them on a daily basis. Some are balancing between the requirements, between the demands of the children placed by schools and the madrasa as well. So what are they doing? A teacher meant by this that the content is reduced when children have school exams. Okay, and increased when the pressure is, is off the children, so that they are able to manage their time and the demands of the schools. One teacher desired for Arabic language to be included so that uh, the learning of the Quran, of the meaning of the Quran can be augmented. There is so much to say. I will leave you because we're almost there on time. However, rather than take up more of your time, let me leave you uh, with the final quotation and ponder over it. So as I said earlier on, there were 26 mothers in the sample. One suggested that the provision should, for childcare should be made. I wonder what the implications and why this has been said and what that means. So respected listeners, to conclude, incorporating these features in the daily life of a maktab would go a long way to alleviate the stereotypical view of the maktab being a mosque school or a Quran school Insha'Allah. Thank you very much for your attention.